the main contributor to the offense of a volleyball team. She's like, sort of like the quarterback on the football team. And she gets every, and I mean every, second ball. She has soft hands to set, perfect sets, just right for attacking. She has strong communication skills and kind of acts like a middleman between the players and the coaches. While on the court and off the court, the setter must be dedicated and must give hundreds and hundreds of hours inside of the gym during workouts, working out with her hitters, even putting in time with her DSs and liberos. She will always get yelled at first and always told off the most because again, she is responsible for getting every, not some, every second ball, no matter what. She has to make the tough decisions out of whom to set, when to set them, when to attack herself, and in what situations she needs to do it. She needs to be able to see both her side of the court and the other side of the court. She has to be the leader of the floor. She has to be that same leader on and off the floor. And sometimes her teammates don't really like her because of the responsibility that she has. A defensive specialist or DS, let's think of them like the support beams of the house. They replace certain players while in the back row by substitution. They typically play middle back defense. They are ready to dig or pursue a ball. They are even ready to play in the front row if need be. Some DSs have hands to set a ball, but not typically. They can also be a back row attacker. They have sound, okay passing or better than a hitter's passing skills. And they also tend to have consistency in the following. Serve receive when digging a ball and while covering a hitter. Also, a DS is very aggressive in the serve, stronger than a given front row player. DSs are fast and go for most balls, but just never as strong or confident or consistent as a libero. Note the signs of a DS are, DSs tend to question a lot. They tend to look at the coach, the sidelines, or their parents for a lot of guidance, which a libero would never do. Now, the libero, AKA the lid or the bro, they can also replace certain players in the back row, but they do not need to sub out. They are not a substitution, which is a wonderful blessing. They are always ready to dig an opponent's attack. They are what I like to call the cover captain, yelling coverage whenever everybody is supposed to go so that everyone else moves into their position. They are always ready to receive the opponent's serve. She believes that every serve received ball is hers and she has the ability to get it. They set the second ball if the setter is unavailable or actually plays defense. The lib is the fastest, most agile player and probably the best court reader on the floor. Here's what a lib or a bro will never do. She will never question if a ball is hers. She will never ask the coach, was that mine? She will never look at the coach or the sidelines or her parents for guidance. She will never stop and look at the passer on her left or her right when going for a ball. She will just go. She never believes a ball is too far out of her reach. She will run it down, die for every ball, not some balls, without question. She will give her body for the game. 
she wants to and needs to cover 75% of the court at all times. She makes those impossible plays and recovers like it's routine, like it's really no big deal. The Lib is a standout genius that gets no praise for her undying efforts, as most times spectators only remember the kill. The truth is, the outside hitter, the OH, the pen, or what I like to call her, the garbage collector, is a beast. I call the OH the garbage collector because, well, they must be able to hit or better any kind of ball set to them. The outside hitter is also usually good at hitting out of system balls, like out of system sets system sets, on the net sets, off the net sets, inside sets, way past the antenna sets, really any set because, well, setting the outside is usually the choice for when a team makes, well, a bad pass. No excuses. You have to hit them all. The outside hitter is usually the player on the team that has well-rounded skills. It's trivia time. Do you know the average percent of sets that an outside hitter receives? Did you guess? On average, the outside hitter receives between 55 and 60% of the sets. I know that the thought of outsides getting 55 to 60% of the sets will frustrate some, but others of you might have that light bulb come on like, oh, I get it. Why my player is not getting set? Simply put, when the game is on the line, it's usually the outside hitter that gets set. That's why most players want to be an outside hitter. Here are some of the characteristics of an outside hitter. They are powerful. They are super loud. They have a crazy vertical and they can hang in the air. They go all out every time and they tend to be super scrappy. They are again that go-to player. There is a distinct aspect that separates an OH1 from an OH2. OH1 is the offensive. She is the no hold bar without a doubt. Hands down, the power, the gun, the grenade, the bazooka. She brings the boom, boom baby. baby. While the OH is bringing the boom, the O2 is the quiet storm. She is the defense, which means she must, and I mean she has to be strong in serve, receive, and digging, and attacking, point blank, period. This O2 brings the finesse, the sense of calm, cool, collected, and control, and consistency to the game. The O2 is typically the sixth rotation outside, while the O1 is typically subbed out and at the serve. Although, as volleyball continues to gain traction, more and more coaches are looking for both the OHs to remain in the game as six rotation players. Now, some of you might ask or might be thinking, or shoot, you just don't even know, what the one and the two behind the OH mean, or any of the positions for that matter. Those numbers actually have a meaning. They represent how many zones the player is from the setter. Some also say that the OH1 doesn't really have to be as strong of a passer as the O2. But again, the game is getting further and further away from that mindset. Having both outside hitters with the ability to pass 
and play defense and serve receive really cuts down on the amount of substitutions the team has to make throughout a game. All those OHs out there, defense and passing are key factors when clubs, colleges, and universities are recruiting for that outside hitting slot. Do not, and I repeat, do not take this lightly. Instead, take a summer and dedicate it to just passing and defense. And remember, just because a camp or clinic says that it's DS slash libero, it doesn't mean you can't sign up and attend. The right side attacker excels on offense and defense, but our first mission is to take care of or block the opponent's most dominant and most aggressive hitter, that outside hitter. Some of her other duties consist of setting the second ball if, one, the setter is played defense and the libero is off the floor, or two, when there's no libero at all, she must, she absolutely must set the second ball. Sometimes a team can run a modified 6-2 offensive system where the right side is an attacker when in front row and the primary setter when she's in the back row. Training as a setter in this position is super important when playing time is considered as most right sides are subbed out for a setter or a DS if they do not possess the, the ability to defend the floor or to set. So, if your position is right side, you do not want to be a one-trick pony or you risk losing optimal playing time. Opposites, tip, block, attack, front and back row. They dig balls, they serve, and is considered one of the most versatile players because they can block and dig. If right sides are good enough, they can be six rotation players. Right sides, listen up. To have a better chance of staying on that floor, learn how to block, play floor defense, and even set. These will be elements of your game that you really want and need to excel in. While the percentage or rate of position change from high school to college is unclear, High school players that play middle that are entering college or the university level volleyball programs have a very, very great chance that they could be asked to switch their position to right side. This is super normal. So keep this in mind as summer hits and these workouts, camps, and clinics are being planned out for next summer. The M1 like the OH, is one zone from the setter. The M1 is set more balls than the M2. And in rotation five, where both the L1 or OH and the M1 are in the front row, the middle is expected to score a bunch of points alongside the L1. The M1 is typically the best middle attacker. The M1 or player chosen to play in the M1 slot plays because they have shown the ability to score using their speed, their power, and vision. The difference between the M1 and the M2 may be their effectiveness off of one foot to hit the slide and to get the blockers to commit leaving a pin or attacking setter open for a one-on-one -on -one situation. Coaches will sometimes switch the M1 and the M2 for matchup purposes on the other side. So the M1 should also be better at the slide than the M2 because she will have more opportunities to go for a slide and a variety of other attacks because she is in fact in the front row with the setter. Now the M2 is the fast monster blocker. She is the great wall. When the M2 is up front, she tends to hit the quicks, also known as one and 31. 
these plays are ran in front of the setter. Now, are there opportunities for the M2 to run a slide? Absolutely. But this particular play must be coordinated with both the setter and the right side because the M2 is in front with two other attackers, which are the outside and the right side. So be careful, communication is key. But understand that the M2's first job is to block. It's really all about who you have, what their skill sets are, and what works best ultimately for the team. The big girl, the M1, the M2, the monster, the beast, the middle has to tackle these feelings and make the best out of every opportunity they have every time they step onto a court. When you think of a middle, what comes to mind? Well, passionate, relentless, agile, and a leaper are all their outwardly characteristics. But middles are some of the most understanding, forgiving, and tireless effort-giving players there are. From pin to pin, this player is the great wall. These middles are blockers, quick on their feet, fast, talkative, and most of all, smart. I mean, they have to be excellent multitaskers, keeping track of the setter and the ball at all times. The middle has three jobs when blocking. The middle's first job is to take up space, meaning blocking an area off. This area could be the line or the angle shot and really make the hitters work around the block. And if the hitters are able to get around that block, understand that the hitters have done their job. And the floor people actually need to work around the block as well and be in position to see the hitter and dig their attack. The second job is to slow the ball down. This means to get a touch on the ball. If the middles are able to get a strong, positive touch on the ball, one that doesn't ping pong off the sides of the hands, they will be able to slow the ball and allow for the floor, again, to do a better job and get a better chance to dig the ball up. The last job of the middle is to stuff block the ball. The stuff is very exciting and loved by all but it's not the first goal of a middle. And oftentimes, floor players become frustrated, upset, and angered with the middle because they don't feel that she didn't stuff the block the ball. But that's like telling a basketball player that their first job is to steal the ball from the opponent. Well, if anyone has played or watched basketball, we know that's not right. The first job is to slow the ball down so everybody can get in position. Can you imagine, just for a little bit, if all the basketball players were on the court running around trying to steal a ball? It would not be much of a game. 